Hello and welcome to another Beer Clipper video. In this video I'm going to show you how to make these trees and they don't shed and they look great on your tabletop really, really easily. If you're not yet a subscriber and you are enjoying this content please do consider clicking that subscribe button and also don't forget to ding the bell so that whenever one of my videos goes live YouTube will tell you about it. This is a slightly different video for me, I've done it entirely as voiceover. I did that because actually I was juggling a little bit and I thought I'd give it a go because a lot of people are doing that that I enjoy watching and well I'm making this for me so why not give it a go for my own videos as well. So hopefully it's going to work out quite nicely but the end game is these two, which is what I've made so far, two trees that you see here which are going to be going onto a model that you'll see on the channel at some point soon. They're really easy to make, they don't require any particular special skills at all, so I'm sure that you're better to make them as well. I'd love to hear if you do, pop a comment below if you do build along or if you've got any observations or suggestions to improve them. I always love to hear from you and I always do reply as well. So without any further ado, let's get into showing you how to make these trees. So what we have here is one of the first things that I ever made way back when I first started doing this whole journey. This is a tree I made in Belgium and what we have that I'm making it from is actually the materials I bought when I was in Belgium funnily enough. So these are barbecue skewers and in this pot, uh, in this box even, is a load of coconut coir. So these are things that you put in the bottom of hanging baskets. And this is the material that I use, these are the two materials that I use to make these trees. This is quite a tedious process, it's something you probably want to do when you've sat either watching an awesome YouTube video like this one or watching a film or doing something else. But basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to tease it apart like you see me doing here. And then once you've teased it apart, sometimes it can be quite difficult to uh, get, the, uh, get the glue to unstick, as again you're seeing, there we are, put a bit of, put a bit of grunt into it, beard. But once you've separated them out, you can start to pick them apart and you can start to rub and twist and kind of breaking apart the square structure that you see. What I should probably say is these did come from the uh, actual hanging basket, liner basket things, uh, and I cut them up when I was in Belgium so that's why they're in squares already so you basically there's a step missing here but it's pretty easy just cut them into different different size uh, squares and then you'll tease them apart like this it's hard it is it is a pain in the backside this one but it's worth doing because the result you get is very very good so I will now just speed this up a bit maybe pop some music on maybe jump to the next step but basically what you're looking at doing is getting a whole bunch of these into uh, in, into a nice teased out order so yeah put a good film on sit back and just crunch crunch squeeze squeeze rip rip and you'll get there very very quickly in the end So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our PVA and we're going to put it onto a plate as you see bottom left hand corner uh, and uh, this is how we're going to be fixing the coconut to the cocktail sticks. Cocktail sticks? Barbecue skewers. Cocktail sticks would be a lot smaller. I suppose if you're in a different scale that would actually work. Anyway, so I've got a brush, an old brush, and I smear a load of PVA onto the barbecue skewer. Sorry for being a little bit out of shot there. Uh, I was focusing mostly on the task and forgetting that I was filming, which is very professional. So we smear a load of PVA all over the skewer. That's actually not the most efficient way to do it. It's better just to do this in small sections because what you'll see is as I push this uh, th this down over the top it actually takes a lot of the PVA off and then I've got to reattach it anyway and reapply it anyway again like I say sorry for being out of shot it's a bit rubbish um, but hopefully you can see enough for you to see how I'm doing it I'm basically building up layers with the PVA and then um, and then putting the coconut on top a little bit of PVA to hold it in place another bit of coconut shoving it all down pressing it all quite close together and this is why you need quite a lot of the coconut matting to get this effect. So once again, I will speed it up, pop some music on. You'll see this process repeated and repeated, and this is what we do. So we do this for every tree that you want. Um, and um, it's as simple as that. I will pop some music on now. Now 
we're going to be doing is we're going to be spraying the foliage with chocolate brown aerosol spray. So this is, um, I think it's heat resistant. It might be car spray. I'm not sure, but it's a very, very good uh, solid spray that sticks to anything and it does stick to the coconut very, very well. So we give a really good covering of this. We don't mind getting it onto the skewer a little bit because that then is acts as a bit of a brown base for the trunk, which is not part of this instruction, uh, but basically you can paint that any color you want to, but that basically is the trunk. But we're looking at getting all of the coconuts to be covered in this brown paint. So that's what I'm doing here. Do this in a well ventilated area and wear a mask. The next step is to come in with a slightly lighter brown and do a little bit of a zenithal highlight. So I've stuck the tree into a little bit of XPS that you can just see poking up at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray from the top just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Now this is a very, very optional part and you don't have to do this, but I decided to give it a go and it does look quite nice. Again, well ventilated area, wear a mask. Now we come to the flocking process. Now the flocking process is done with 3M permanent craft mount, which I found to be the best spray glue for this task. I have to order it in as it happens. I can't buy this locally, but it's worth getting from Amazon um, for me anyway, because the local stuff isn't as good. So you're doing a really, really generous covering here. You're getting in close, as you can see, and trying to get the glue to go into all the nooks and crannies and cover every single bit of the a coconut with glue and once that's sprayed you need to apply your flock now this is homemade flock you can obviously use shop bought flock and as you can see there's a couple of different ways you can go about actually getting the um, getting the flock onto the branches either dip it in or scatter it to make a mess like I'm doing Whatever you do, just make sure you get a really nice solid covering. If you want to do dual color, which I've not done on these, then you can do another spray of the glue and put a different color flock on. We give it a really, really good bash, hammer, shake, whatever, to make sure that you're knocking off any loose flock back into the pot that you can then re-adhere. And you're making sure you're covering all of the gaps, but you don't care about the underneath of the tree. That should be brown. So there you are, that is flocking. Now we come to the last part, which is sealing with varnish. So this is clear varnish that I buy locally and it's really, really good. So I don't bother ordering in and you're going to give a very, very good solid covering of this varnish. Now be aware of humidity and the, and the misting and whatever you can do if you use it wrong. But if you use this in the correct conditions, then it works really, really well and it dries absolutely transparent. So that is how you seal. And that is the last step of this guide. Well, there we are. I hope that you found that useful. I will be back again very shortly with another video in this series, which is how to make deciduous trees. So twisted wire and other various methods. And that's a slightly longer video. So I've decided to split the two up, uh, get this out to you, and then I'll come back with the uh, twisted wire and other methods for deciduous trees in another video. So please do pop your comments below if you've enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts. I do hope you do give it a go as well. Let me know if you do that. And thanks ever so much for watching. And I'll sign off by saying, as I always do, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.